Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Streaming Safari here at the Lion Habitat Ranch. We're coming to you from a different spot today. I don't know if you can see Ozzy eating his fidget spinner back there. And the girls wanting to participate in Streaming Safari. Hey girls. You want to make a water clock? I know you do. <laughs> Thank you guys, as always, for if you've been able to donate, been able to come out and see us. We do really appreciate it. Um, Christmas and all of our other fun holidays are coming up. And Aussie paintings make a pretty good Christmas gift, so just keep that in mind. All the links are down below as usual, and we are on our winter hours. We are open 11 to 3 from Thursday to Monday. Was that a yawn or a sneeze? <laughs> I was waiting for Denise to sneeze. <laughs> Bless you either way. Um, so uh, what else do we have? Wine and paint. Wine and Paint is coming up on the 24th, which is the Friday after Thanksgiving. So um, we have a few spots left. Uh, you do have to book in advance, so get those. Uh, we only have so many spots for the Wine and Paint to make sure you guys can see the painting and all that fun stuff. Um, a bunch of fun stuff is included, so please go look at the website. Check that out if you want to go out on a little like date evening uh, on the day after Thanksgiving, you or know, girls day. or girls day or whatever. Man's come, day. come man's day. man's day. Yeah. I like the idea of that. That sounds good. Ozzy likes the idea of that. He is going to be here painting with you. You're going to paint with a giraffe, but you're going to be painting when a giraffe is painting, which sounds pretty cool to me. I don't know where else you get to do that. I don't think anywhere else you get to do that. Don't quote me on that because I don't want to be in trouble. But I don't think anywhere else you get to do that. Okay, anyway, to Streaming Safari. So today we're going to make a Clepsydra, which is a water clock. So the word Clepsydra comes from the Greek version of the water clock, um, which is the first part of the word, uh, the clep part. You think of like klepto. Um, kleptic, I think, kleptic, in... I could be wrong on the exactly what that is. That. It's the first part. I strayed from math. I had it in my head. Um, so that first part of the word actually means thief. So same thing. And then the last part of the word, the hydro part, means water. So it's actually water thief or what these clocks are called. They weren't just used by Greeks. They were used by all kinds of different um, cultures in the past and there's all kinds of different versions of them. We're going to make a really, really simple one. And essentially what they do is they use water as a mechanism to tell time. So you can get a couple simple things for this. You can change out any of these items too. You can think of all kinds of other things that you could use. If you don't have these things, there's plenty of other stuff that's going to work. Um, I just grabbed kind of the easiest kind of stuff. One is a mason jar. You're also going to want a cup of some kind that you're going to be able to poke a hole in the bottom of. So it doesn't have to be, I mean, it could technically be a plastic cup or a styrofoam cup, just something that you can poke a hole in. Um, a bottle cap or some other thing that can hold on to something, to like a piece of string. So you just want this as like a barrier, as like a blocker, so that this the item doesn't fall through. You'll see in a second. But something like a bottle cap works really well. Again, you can come up with lots of things to replace these. I have a tiny little bell here, but you can use anything else. This bell is kind of like an alarm. Um, anything that's going to make noise when it plops into the cup is going to be good. Oh, is this kind of like the candle for an alarm clock situation? A candle for an alarm clock. Yeah, so that could be similar. Days, they used to like put something in a candle, nails in a candle. And then once the candle got to a certain point, the nail would fall on the floor, making a clatter. So I'm sure you can't hear Denise, but she's describing a similar type of clock using a candle with a nail in it. Yes, it's a similar type of concept. So something that's going to allow something to fall or something to alert you to the fact that a certain amount of time has passed. So um, you're going to also need something like a stir stick or something to put across your cup um, to lightly hold on to your bell. It's not super important what it is as long as it's kind of long and sticky. You probably also need some string, maybe some scissors, maybe something sharp. I've actually grabbed myself a pen and of course some water. So um, what I've done already is I have poked a hole in the bottom of my bottle cap. 
this hole, the size of it is just to put your string through so it doesn't actually matter the size of the hole. I'm gonna poke a very small hole, at least at first, um, with this pen through this uh, cup here. This hole you can make different sizes and something that you can do when you play with this experiment is make the hole different sizes and see how long it takes for the water to run out. So you might wanna have a clock that's like, like an egg timer, right? That's only like a couple minutes or something like uh, maybe like a 10 minute timer or you're you know, baking cupcakes and you need a 25 minute timer or something like that. Or you could have a more long-term one like eight hours or any, any kind of time, just depending on how fast your clock runs, how much water you put in it. Okay, so we have a hole in our cup, a hole in our bottle cap, and we're gonna take some of our string. Right now I'm not really gonna care how long I cut it. Um, for when we just set it up. And my string is gonna go into my bottle cap. Our lions are talking, hopefully you can hear them in the background. Do you like this experiment, guys? Yeah, yeah, you like it? All right. I have some tough strings, so it may actually be able to hold on to it pretty, pretty well. And then this cup is the cup I'm gonna put my water in. And what I'm gonna want to happen is I want this to actually float on top of the water. So I don't wanna make this string too long. I wanna make sure that it's shorter than the whole entirety of the cup itself. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna try to put the bell on it first, just so I have room to tie the bell on. And then I'm gonna cut it once I have the bell looped through. So we'll cooperate. I don't recommend using a twine like this. <laughs> this is this was what we had in the in the streaming safari cupboard. Yes, you could you could use floss. That's a great idea, actually. That might might work out quite well for you. Okay. Uh, let's do like right there. Or right there. And I could even actually leave a little bit of this on there, you're gonna see. So you want to put up a glass or a glass or anything like that. So that, because when I put the water in with the hole in there, what's gonna happen is it's gonna start dripping out eventually, depending on the size of the hole. So when I put water in here, this bottle cap is gonna float. It's gonna float on top of my water. And so I can put my little stir stick and then just basically balance the bell on top. And then as the water goes down, the weight, and you could even add extra weight if you don't have enough weight on it. Um, the weight of the water coming down should allow the bell to eventually drop into the cup when the cup is empty. Um, our little bird bells aren't super, super loud alarms. But keep an eye on it. You see, this is the rate that my water is dripping. And what we can do that they couldn't do in the past is we can actually set a timer and see how long this actually takes, right? Um, so like if you had an hourglass, the same concept, you could turn it over, you could see how long your hourglass lasts. And then you can use your hourglass much more easily than they could in the past when they had to actually hmm, look at the sun and do different things that we've done in other streaming safaris to actually tell how long this is going to go. And when the water is all out of it and the bell rings, um, then you can tell what time it is. I think so the bird bells aren't that loud. For the they really aren't. Owners. They really aren't. Yeah, probably for the sake of their owners. So yes, so then hopefully if you can find something, oh, well, made a little ring, made a little bit of ring. <laughs> and then if you make the hole in the bottom of the cup bigger or even smaller, if you just poke it with a needle, that'll be able to change the rate of the water dripping and whether your clock is slower or faster. Pretty easy experiment for you guys. I hope you have fun playing with that. See you next time.